What's up guys, Emoj is back with a new episode of Agatha Christie's The ABC Murders. So, we just finished Bexville and we're back here and I don't know, all of these shady people are here, I don't really know why. But yeah, let's, let's check all of them out. So if I remember a few faces at least. So let's see. Franklin let's Clark see. always seems at ease, regardless of what he is. Something that's unique to people who travel. Franklin Clark always. I hope to concentrate on my guest. All right. Look at these two. Donald is always on edge. Shaving cut and tense hands. He's he's always on edge. Leave me alone. Dark circles. Donald Fraser is very nervous at the moment, even if he's trying hard to control himself. Well, he's obviously not trying hard enough. That's all I notice. All right, so let's let's check her out then. Let's see what she, she has to, to more care with her appearance hide. than the last time. All right, had to turn up my my mic a little bit. Okay, so the necklace. Mr. Hearing. Poirot, I don't like being stared at. If you have something to say, would you please say it to me? Just looking at Donald. That's interesting. She's looking at Mr. Fraser out of the corner of her eye. Did she make herself beautiful for? Maybe we don't know. I should take advantage of the silence to examine them. But I did. All right, then let's look at these as well. The song says, "Sometimes I love a blonde who comes from Eden by way of Sweden." But I am not sure that this blonde is an angel. <laughs> All right then. All right. Sometimes I love a brunette. Sometimes I love a blonde. That's what the song say. I wish to thank you all for coming. I wanted to bring everyone close to the victims here in order to unmask the murderer. Get to the point, Mr. Poirot. What do you want from us? You are an intelligent woman, Mademoiselle Barnard, and I'm sure that you have already understood my intentions. You think that if we put our heads together, we might come up with something new? I am convinced of it. What I ask is that you search your memories. The murderer must have left some trace. Yes, he must have prepared his crimes very carefully. Tout à fait. He did not get to Bexhill at midnight in order to strangle a young girl whose name, by chance, starts with B. Must we go into that? I agree that the subject creates a feeling of discomfort. Tell Donald to get a grip on himself. No, of course. Not if it makes you uncomfortable. Come on, Mr. Poirot. I imagine we all feel terribly uncomfortable about these murders. It's true. We've to catch the killer, not be spared the gory details. Mr. Fraser, please get a grip on yourself. Well, I want to help you, but... I don't remember anything else. Nothing I haven't already said. And you, Mademoiselle Barnard? Did your sister say she was seeing another man? She never would have told me. 
small donkey. Yeah, I actually made a mistake. <laughs> uh, asked my wife. Betty didn't say anything. Yeah, why did she why would not she say hide anything? the fact from you? Betty knew I didn't approve of her behavior. Her flirting was spoiling any chance she might have had. Tell me, Mademoiselle, what did you talk about with your sister? Silly things. Her new dress. She wanted a pair of black stockings to go with it. Mother bought her a brand new pair. The day it happened, she was crying. And to think that Betty never even wore them. Oh, poor mummy. Your sister used to sing, I believe. Did she ever perform in public? She dreamt about it, but she had a very bad cough. It troubled her greatly. She had to cancel auditions and miss lots of opportunities. A pity. Yes, she sang well, but that doesn't tell us much about the murderer. Qui sait? In any case, we now have enough information to draw up a relatively precise psychological profile. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. Let's try that. Is the killer clever? Well, he wrote a wrong letter. Like the address was wrong. Killed when the street was packed with people. This was a rather bold. No? Material proof. Killer's methodo methodical and prepares his crimes meticulously. Never forgets to leave his intriguing signature behind. Okay, that's not that. <laughs> Without the ABC, we might have suspected Mr. Asher and Mr. Fraser, but by signing his crimes, the murderer is making sure that he's accused. In a way, it's very generous of him. A man seduced Betty before taking her to the beach. A passenger timetable. Maybe the murderer lacks trains. Indeed, let us look again at this murder, if you please. You will see that the murderer carried it out to perfection. What? Hey! Is the killer sure of himself? Ah, okay, that's... that's... that. What do you mean, no? What the fuck? Oh, they're announcing. No. It could have been all of these. Fuck off, seriously. Is the killer... yeah. Right? Is, does the killer like trains? Hmm. It seems like that. Is the killer impulsive? Hmm. Well, all of these go against that. Is the killer generous? Yeah, that's very generous of him. Don't mind the killing, it's all good because he's so generous to leave his signature behind. So, ladies and gentlemen, we can now surmise without too much risk of error that our adversary is calculative, sure of himself, a seducer of outstanding intelligence, that he has plenty of self-control and that he likes railways. It's a good start. Other meetings may be necessary. I hope that you will be able to come back again. Well, it's just that... <sighs> Push Mary so that she helps. Ask Mary what is bothering her. Point out that she is short of money for the train. Well, what's bothering you? Is something bothering you, Mary? Well, Mr. Poirot, you see... I don't know if I can come to London just like that. It's normal that people helping with this inquiry should be reimbursed. Starting with you, Miss Drower, please allow me to pay for your train tickets. Oh, sir, I cannot accept. 
but you must. Mademoiselle, I may not be rich, but my brother left a fortune which will be mine. Mr. Clark, that's very generous of you. Well, someone has to foot the bill. Mr. Poirot, would it be possible for you to come back to Devon? Lady Clark has expressed a wish to see you. We'll adjust her medicine so she'll not be too drowsy. But of course, I shall come the day after tomorrow if it is convenient. Thank you all for coming. We will meet again soon. The meeting was most fruitful. Really? Hastings, I believe now we really? have everything we need to find a common point between the victims. Now it is time for us to use our grey matter. All right. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. What do the victims have in common? Betty was seeing other men as well as Donald. The body was still warm. Betty had a photo of her and Donald. First victim was called Asher. Mr. Asher took a cough medicine. Mr. Asher, Mrs. Asher had a violent husband. Donald was a violent man. Betty had problems with her voice. Sir Carmichael Clark was a famous retired doctor. Sir Carmichael Yard was to look close to Thorough Grey. So, violent husband, violent man, and cough medicine? Nah. They both took some kind of medicine. He was a doc. Seriously. All the victims suffered from throat afflictions. The first okay. two victims suffered from bad throat, and that was precisely the speciality of the third victim, Dr. Clark. We have a lead. It would pay to take a closer look at the medical records of Dr. Clark's patients. We'll do so during our next visit to Churston. I will do it myself, mon ami. You must remain in London just in case ABC sends us another letter. Very well, as you wish. Thank you for coming, Mr. Poirot. Lady Clark is waiting for you in her bedroom on the first floor. Please excuse me, I cannot stay for the interview. I have to take Miss Gray to the station to see our lawyer in Torquay. Ask if Thoreau is going on holiday, ask if Thoreau is leaving her job. Well, ask nicely. Are you going on holiday, mademoiselle? Not exactly, Mr. Poirot. Miss Gray very kindly stayed with me to settle my brother's affairs, but naturally she prefers to find a position in London. Ah, très bien. I'll be absent all morning, Mr. Poirot, but the nurse is coming soon. She's to ensure that the dose of medicine doesn't make our patient drowsy. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Have a nice trip, mademoiselle. All right. Let the looting begin. It would be rude to make Lady Clark wait. Okay, or maybe not. It is now the right. It's always the right time to fix your mustache. Yes. Exactly. It's closed. All right. It would be rude to make Lady Clark. All right. This poor woman is very ill. I can see that without observation. Dazed eyes. Clenched fist. Oh yeah, painkillers. This woman is suffering. She is in no state to have a conversation. All right. It and let's look around. To make Lady Clark. The hell? Okay, then let's talk anyway. Mr. Poirot? My respects, madame. Thank you for coming. Thank you. How 
Have you seen the nurse? She should have been here by now. Oh, I'm sorry. The telephone in the hall is ringing. All right. Let's check it out. Who's calling? Seriously. The Clark residence. Detective Hercule Poirot speaking. How do you do, Mr. Poirot? I'm Lady Clark's nurse. I wanted to let you know that I won't be able to come for her injection today. Might Miss Gray be able to do it? She has just left, but I will take care of it. Thank you. That's very kind of you. Um, you'll find the skeleton key to open the medicine cabinet hidden in the lion trophy. You can count on me. Au revoir, mademoiselle. Oh, thank you kindly. Goodbye, Mr. Poirot. All right. The skeleton key. How fitting. How fitting. Here is the skeleton key. All right. Back to her. Oh, wait. We need to open the cabinet first. Lady Clark is in pain. I have to give her an injection of morphine to ease her suffering. It's closed. Ah, oh, Mr. Poirot. Oh, I feel better now. Thank you for your help. Ask what she has to say about the murder. Remind her of her invitation to come and see her. Madame, you are tired, so I will get straight to the point. What can you tell me about this business? What business, Mr. Poirot? No doubt. You wish to talk to me about what happened to your husband? Ah, yes. Oh, poor Carmichael. Has the madman who killed him been caught? Not yet, chère madame. There was a great many people in Chester on the day of the murder. Indeed. People go straight to the beach. They don't come near Coombe's side. So, there were no strangers around the house that day? Who said that? The people who live here. Your brother-in-law, Miss Gray. Miss Gray? Oh, I don't like her. Franklin wanted her to stay, but I insisted she should go. Immediately. You are entitled to do so, naturally. I'm pleased that you approve. The others have been taken in by her. But at least you can see through that self-pity act. See what she's up to. Oh. All right. Morphine is working. I but, but we know by now this like who's could probably be useful. Who's the murderer? We saw him. And we know where the name ABC comes from. This subject would probably be useful to me. What the hell is Ah. Okay, they're numbered. That is really, really interesting. This couple appears to be having fun. Fun game of Crockett. Lady Clark, Radiant. Lady Clark and Sir Carmichael. Lady Clark and Sir Carmichael were very happy, but they did not have any children. Oh, 
Oh, oh, come on. You never went there. This subject will probably be useful to me. I run around now for five minutes or so not knowing what to do. Okay, now we have this. What else? Okay. What the hell is this? The mechanism appears to be Seriously. The mechanism appears. Oh. Ah. Oh shit. Oh the spring appears. Ah. Uh, we have something. Look I hope that Hastings will not be cross with me. <laughs> okay, so now the question is just... In what order do we have to put these? I really hope this is correct. Nice. about ah yes uh, uh, thora gray oh carmichael had great esteem for her but for me she was nothing but a hypocrite miss gray was a hard worker thank goodness fortunately she was good at her job i don't see why you all think you should have to defend that girl. Well, I don't know what she did wrong, so... You are very harsh. Do not forget that the girl is an orphan. Yes, and she used the fact to get around men. Take Franklin. He's fallen for her sweet talking charms. Oh, he's a lovely boy, very plucky and sure of himself. But so naive, oh, when it comes to women. Miss Gray did look after you very well. Outwardly. But she's hiding something. I think she tried to poison me. Miss Grey? A poisoner? But everybody appears to like her. It proves she knows what she's doing. She's manipulative and she's a liar. A liar? Let's see, didn't she say that on the day of the crime nobody was around Coombside? That is correct. Well, at eleven o'clock I saw her talking to... someone. Really? And what was this man like? An ordinary sort of man, with a very plain face. Oh, I don't remember well. Was he a gentleman? No, he was not, not a gentleman. It would be best to leave her to sleep now. Definitely. The telephone in the hall is ringing. Again? God damn it. What's happening in this house? Seriously. Hello? <laughs> Hello? Waro, is that you? Hastings here. Thank you for calling. Have you received a new letter from the murderer? No, thank goodness. How are things in Churston? I question Lady Clark, but I will not leave until I have examined everything of interest to me here. Fortunately, Franklin is absent. And I have a skeleton key. Have you seen Thora Gray again? Briefly. But rest assured, 
I intend to summon her to London soon. She's a fascinating girl. But secretive, I would like to ask her a few questions. Poirot, she wouldn't hurt a fly. Each to his own, my friend. Yours are pretty often mine old ladies that have the maladies. Poirot, are you mocking me? No ill intended, rest assured. A bientôt, mon ami. Inspect the mansion, finally. What the hell is that? I mean, it's a world map, obviously. This plate appears to be able to move, but something is blocking it. Oh shit. This plate appears... Huh. I must need something to continue. Okay, we don't have that something just yet, so... Let's continue searching for it. Okay, since I have really no idea what this... Since I have no idea what this puzzle is about, really, I will... Save it for later, but I, for some reason I can't leave. Alright, no idea. Oh, the next one. Four Chinese symbols are engraved on this padlock. I won't okay. manage to do it randomly. Mm -hmm. Should I look at the rest of the facade, maybe? That's the idea. Because look at that. Well, well. The characters engraved on this disc resemble those engraved on the padlock. Oh, shit. The position of this character looks right to me. Okay. So, what does it look like? This is the last one. It's that, I guess. So, what about this one? That's it. This card. Okay, that's the second one. It looks like that. So, the first one is I this. Guess. Right, that one, no, and it's not the high court. Yeah, come on, I did not do the last one yet. The position of this car. Right, it's the third one. Open sesame. At last, the cupboard is open. At last. So, genteel and wild English. The railway children, in SB. For Franklin, on Tefis Christmas, nineteen ten. Traveling, Traveling in China. China. Alright. And met flask and rifles. Franklin is very well equipped. Yeah, it looks like it. Alright. That was the cabinet. Is there something in there as well? July 1920. Unfortunately not.
Franklin appears to be very active. Tennis racket. Impressive collection. Franklin Clark appears to be a typical British gentleman. A good sportsman, a hunter, a traveller. Franklin Clark appears to be yeah. a typical yeah, British gentleman. Can. A good sportsman. A hunter, Shut a traveller. All right. No. Franklin Clark Fuck appears to be off. a typical British gentleman. A good sportsman, a hunter, a traveller. Okay, so far I have no idea what to do with this world map. I will keep looking around. Maybe I will find a hint. Because I really don't know what to do with it right now. Let's see How what's am that. I going to open this trunk? Let us examine it. Why is there everything behind some kind of lock or code or anything? 1927. I think this number might be important. That does not appear to be very you. That does not appear. Yeah. Come on. So, let's try 1927. Look at that. Leaving the code on the trunk. What oh, a strange shit. character Franklin is. Oh shit. Okay, no idea. 28. 31. 5. What? I can move this. Oh shit. Well, I can't move it back up. Fuck. Okay, it's seven. And then that's the second timing, I guess. 720. Let's try 720. So, what huh. is this sound? All right. I should be able to open the time. There we are. What the hell? <laughs> oh! Found a stash! Whiskey and other good quality drinks. Mr. Clark really has refined tastes. It's empty. Can you close it again? Let's start at the bottom. What the hell? Why has Franklin put an Allen key inside his trunk? 
I'll bow it for a minute. Okay, that's empty again. All right, that's only the whiskey again. What's what's up here? Ah. A pile of books, including one about dragons. Nothing interesting. No? Okay, that's weird. I thought I can open it with this. Yes. Maybe I need to put it like that? Yes, okay. Are you serious? <laughs> That's number one. Another screw. And that's number two. This engraving is not very easy a to understand. Map. I need to sort it That's out. That's definitely a map. Maybe this will help us with the other map. Okay, the first one is fixed and we just have to align everything else to that. Oh shit. Finally, that took way too long. I think I heard the panel above really. Oh, hey. What happened? Oh, yeah, this thing opened. A, a ring. A signet ring with a code written on it. 1587. It may be useful to me. Okay. Holy shit. Sir Carmichael's collection could rival that of a major museum. Apparently. The door is... Ah, not for long. This unit contains the medical records for Sir Carmichael Clark's patients. Let us study them closely and see if there are any familiar names. No dust on the records from A to D. They've been handled recently. No known names. Disappointing. Disappointing. Lots of dust. The records from E to Z have not been touched for years. No known names. Disappointing. Well, too bad. Too bad. So come back. I see some papers that were not there the first time I visited. Valuers report property. Building land located in Comside, Churston Client, Sir Carmichael Clark, April 15, 1935, Court and Brunskill Office. Okay, I cannot look inside, apparently. Why not? Come Values on, it's still... Why does it still say zero, Quentin but I... Quentin Brunskill. The name is familiar. No. Is that not the name of the firm Donald Fraser works for? 
I have no idea. Don't ask me this. These daggers are only ceremonial weapons. I do not think that the crime weapon is here. Not anymore, These because one is missing. Only Ernest Luggan, MD Brighton Cancer Institute, 201 Dusk Road, Brighton, Sussex. Lady Smell Clark, of... your oh. wife is suffering from a generalized terminal cancer. I confess I didn't suspect anything like that during the first exams. But with the test... Ah, oh, there was the red, I already. That lady. red already. All right. Ah, here were the symbols for the... Okay, that was the solution for the one thing we solved last time. Attention, Franklin. Task list. A. Ordering Lady Clark remedies. Done. E. All right. Update land rent accounting. D That's the brush the girl was wearing. A dragon for a bright haired maid. C. Huh. I've already seen similar daggers. Right, so why is this door open? Stupid question, maybe. But I really want to know. Order and method above all. Let us finish examining the mansion while... Okay. So it seems like only this world map is missing, but I have no idea what to do with this. This plate appears... This plate appears... This plate appears... Something's this plate blocking appears it. To be okay. able to move. plates around the picture appear to have unlocked. I think I've already seen these symbols on Franklin's trophies. Well, good for you. Oh shit, okay, where's this shit from, huh? Alaska. Okay, I'm just like clicking randomly around and seems like I got lucky. The Lion of Sumat. Huh. I heard the sound of a mechanism. Finally, the sound of a fucking way of oh. protecting one's safe. Yeah, I. Manipulating one's hunting sites on the map. I found. I found a fucking code somewhere. Fuck, 15 something. Fifteen eighty seven. No, one five eight seven. These documents are very likely going to help me for the rest of the inquiry. Hopefully. A dozen gold sovereigns, some shares for the Southern Railway and some treasury bills. This is not worth much, hardly enough to justify your robbery. A dozen gold... Charlotte Clark Comside, Churston, Devon, to Mr. Franklin Clark, Peninsula Hotel, Salisbury Road, 
Chim Shatsui, colon, Hong Kong, Comside, 1935, January 1st. I wish you with all my heart a happy year 1935. Writing my greeting cards, I have affectionate thoughts for you. Always smiling as a child, sailing to distant countries and bringing back to us trunks full of wonder. At home, everything annoys me. Starting with this young Thora Sir Carmichael is so fond of. I have nobody to share my feelings with, so I write to you. How can I tell you what happens to me? The simplest way the better. I am doomed. I still have one year to live, no more. How do I... I opened the secret drawer of Carmichael and read a letter not addressed to me. In this letter, Dr. Logan tells my husband in the most direct way the truth he conceals from me. Sir, I know. But my husband doesn't know I know. Please don't tell him. And if he shares the truth with you, act as you are surprised. Carr will probably speak in his usual convoluted way, but I wanted to be the first to announce it to you. It does matter to me that you are aware of what happens in Comside. Warm regards. Charlotte. Sir Carmichael Clark, Comside, Churston, Devon, to Mr. Franklin Clark, Peninsula Hotel, Sasbury Road, Tsinshasui, Kowloon, Hong Kong, Comside, 1935, January the 12th. Dear Franklin, First, I wish you a good start to a successful new year. I have received your letter dated December 10th. Thanks for defending my interest against Wang, this robber. Things could have got pretty bad if you weren't a real good-blooded guy. I envy you for that. Things go on here much as usual. Charlotte is moderately free from pain. I wish one could say more. You may remember Thora Gray. She is a dear girl and a greater comfort to me that I can tell you. I should not have known what to do through this bad time but for her. She has an exquisite taste and shares my passion for Chinese art. No daughter could be a closer or more sympathetic companion. Life has been difficult, but I am glad to feel that here she has a home and to affect. You wrote me you want to stay in China for one more year or even longer. I don't object. The longer you stay, the more opportunities you will have to increase our collection. Nonetheless, you should know that we miss you here and that Charlotte will be gone by the time you come back. I am, dear Franklin, your truly affectionate brother. At an college school year, school report for Franklin Clark. According to his teachers, Franklin was a good student, but lacked discipline. All right. Holy shit. All right, so let's see what else is to do in here, right? Because I have to admit I have no idea what's left, if anything's left. I mean, I think we found everything, right? Order and method above all. All right. Let's finish examining the mansion. No, we're done here. Why? Yeah. All good. Did we examine this? Okay, that was just the comment regarding his collection. They have some very valuable. Right. South is upward. Traditional Chinese map. Facsimile. South is on the top of the map. Compass, point to the thousand. Bronze and magnetite, Han Dynasty, circa 
210 BC, purchased in Hong Kong 1935. Why do I hear this music now all of a sudden again? I think we're done. Order. Maybe we're not. So we open. Huh, what's that? Oh no. Oh. I thought it's this cabinet here. <laughs> Is there anything else in there? No, right? We were done in there. Everything's opened up. We checked everything. I'm sure of it. Ah, oh, we haven't checked this. <laughs> oh, telescope. What's that? Did Mythology we check everything now? Tristan Devon. Arsenic trioxide thallium. The Black Dragon's Curse. The Black Dragon's Curse. To Franklin. Will never grow up. <laughs> ah, the objective inspect the mansion surroundings. Right. Where is the horrible smell of cayenne coming from? Oh shit, he wanted to say something and I clicked it away. Brown There's pellets. a dead rat. Revolting. Brown pe <laughs> Ta -ta. The gardener does not follow the alignment. There, that's better. It is symmetrical. Oh boy. There. All right. This fountain makes a very relaxing sound. It does. Come on, Provo, can you get a step faster? It was probably the gardener who lit this fire. Look here. I wonder if someone wanted to get rid of these papers. This subject will probably be useful to me. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. Why did Thora leave personal belongings behind at Compside? Thora left Sir Carmichael's gift. Carmichael wrote to Franklin to tell him that he found Thora charming. Thora, great expert in art history. Thora left a better letter behind. He stayed behind to settle Sir Carmichael's affairs. And a dagger is missing. That makes sense. Thora does not want to be accused of theft. Everything that Thor Grey has left behind comes from Sir Carmichael's collection. He most probably gave them to her. But she chose to leave them here rather than run the risk of being accused of theft. It is understandable when you know just how much Lady Clark mistrusts her. Let 
us now try and get our brain cells to work. Is Thora a poisoner? There was a poisoned rat. Thora had ordered rat poison. And Lady Clark thinks that Thora Great tried to poison her. Oh? Doctor Lady Clark only has one year left to live. Well... What? Oh! What? With the letter? What does this have to do with Thora Grey? Oh, never considered poison. Thora Grey okay. had no reason to kill someone who only had a few months left to live. That's the, right. The poison she ordered was for rats. The gardener must have made good use of it, considering the stinking remains on the pass, not far from the property. I've finished here. I must put the skeleton key back and inform Hastings that I'm returning to London. Oh. May you have huh. peace, Carmichael. Charlotte. Nice. Okay, so let's put the skeleton key back and then we're out of here. So we put it back where we have it from, of course. April. Can I even put it back? Yeah. Perfect. Nothing else is keeping me here. Nice. All right. I am not going to leave Comsign now. I still have some things to. What? I am not. What? He just said that he's leaving. Best to leave her to sleep. If someone has tried to get rid of these documents. What? It just said Hotel from Hastings. He did not say a thing about Hello, that. Hastings? I have finished in Shirtstone. I will take the first train. Tell me, do you know how to restore writing on a burnt document? Yes, you just have to soak a cloth with a hydrochloric acid solution and rub the sheet of paper. Then the characters appear. Bien. You have been of great assistance, Hastings. Could you please order the solution as soon as possible? Of course, but what documents do you want to read? You will see, my friend. À ce soir. Donald Fraser is here. He insisted on waiting to see you. Oh, well. Hungarian mustache. All right, guys, we've finished this episode. We finished the second visit in this mansion. So I'm leaving this episode here. I really hope you enjoyed it. We solved all the puzzles. It took a while. <laughs> this. Okay, I had to. Yeah. I'm recording for a while now, but still. We finished everything in time. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit the like button, leave me a comment, and I will see you again in the next episode. So, see ya.